before I begin, I want to start off with saying most of the content that's going to be in this video will be able to be found on archived versions of Gas Powered Games forums. There are multiple modding tutorials on there which I have learned from. However, as I said, you need an internet archive to get to them. They're no longer live. This makes it very difficult to find any content on modding and any tutorials as well. Because in order to find that content, you have to first figure out where to get the archive link from. And then you have to go through and search for whatever you want on that archive, just hoping that what you're looking for will be there. This tutorial series will serve as a summary of all that information and as a live version of that. This specific episode of the tutorial is going to go over the most basic forms of editing an existing unit. I will go over all the types of blueprint merges and shadowing. I will also go over setting up your mod workspace. I use Steam, so anything that I do will be in regards to the Steam version of Supreme Commander 2. To begin, I'm going to set up a logger for Supreme Commander 2. In order to do that, we need to first find our game in the Steam Games Library. Once you've found it, right-click it and go to Properties. And then under Set Launch Options, paste this in. I will have this in the video description. And then once you have done that, go to Local Files and Browse Local Files. And then go into the Game Data folder. This is where our mod will be going. And these files here, these archives, they have the files that we need to open to create our units. To start off, we're going to add a folder here. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it new mod, but it has to end with that SCD. The game looks for content in files that end with that SCD. These files here are just archives. They just end with that SCD. And using a folder that ends with that SCD is the best way to create a mod. Because that way, instead of extracting your mod and then making the edits and then going back through, all of that can be skipped by just using a folder. Now that we have created our mod folder, we have to create one folder inside of it called Mods. And then inside of that folder, another folder called DLC1. And then inside of this folder, another folder called Shadow. For this tutorial, I'm going to be editing the UEF point defense. All of the units that are originally in the game are under the uncompiled Lua archive. Here is a very specific naming system that can help to find units. There are three letters of every folder. The first is a U. Every single folder, every single unit will have that. It stands for unit. The next letter is the faction. In this case, it's UEF, so it's a U. The third letter is the type of unit. The third letter of these selected files is an A. That means they are an air unit. All of the files selected now have a third letter of B. They are buildings. They are structure units. These units' third letter is an L. They are land units. These selected units have a third letter of M, which stands for module. They are factory upgrade modules. These units' third letter is S. They are C units. These units third letter is an X. They stand for experimental unit. I don't believe there is any good way to know what the numbers mean. So to find the unit you're looking for, it's going to come down to two things. It's going to come down to memory and opening up the unit file and finding its name. Opening the folder and opening the unit.blueprint file. And then just scroll down until it says display name. Now I know that what I'm looking at is the nuke defense silo. I happen to memorize them somewhat, so I know that the point defense is UUB0101. We need a file that ends in .bp, stands for blueprint. This is where our unit merges will be going. The way Supreme Commander 2 loads files is in alphabetical order. We need our blueprint merges to have a few Z's in front of them to make sure that ours get loaded last. Because if we're doing a blueprint merge that gets loaded first, it's going to be overwritten by the actual unit later on. So we want them to be later. We can do that easily by adding three Z's before it. 
that'll cover us for the base game. Also, this mod is assuming the player has the DLC. Errors can occur if the player does not have the DLC. If you are merging on a unit that is from the DLC, and the user with the mod does not have the DLC, the game will crash. So you need to be aware of that if you edit units of the DLC. To show it really quickly, the DLC units are in this archive right here. Uncompiled Lua DLC 1. We're going to start off with a simple unit merge. So when you have your blueprint file, and you have the unit that you want to edit, copy all of the information of that unit into this file. You can have multiple unit blueprint merges in one file. There are two other types of blueprint merges that this tutorial will go over. Ability blueprints and projectile blueprints. A unit blueprint merge needs these two lines to define what is being done. This says that it's a merge, and the blueprint ID is the ID of the unit that you are editing. For me, it's the point defense, so it's UUB0101. These two lines negate out in Lua. That tells it to not run the rest of this line. This is a way to make commentary in your edit so you know what you have done. So I can use that to write here that this is the point defense without causing errors. There are two ways that you can do a blueprint merge. You can either overwrite the entire file by copying everything the original unit had and then pasting that in, or you can only put in what you want to overwrite. The recommended way to do this is to only put in what you're going to overwrite. However, if you left everything in as I have right now, that will work as well. It's just frowned upon. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to leave very specific parts in. All of these entries here, like death, defense, display, economy, they are all listed on the wiki. There's too many of these for me to explain. There's just too much information to go over. So I will have a page linked which will go over all of that, what you will need to know if you were to edit this. Because there's just too much information for me to explain what all of these do. For my purposes, I have kept only what I'm going to overwrite. I'm going to change the categories by adding one category and removing a category. I'm doing this because the way you edit categories is very different than how you would do a normal variable change. Because the categories are in a list, you can't just add a category by typing it in. There's a different method that needs to be done. We need to get the specific entry of that list to edit. In this case, since there's 18 categories already listed, and I'm trying to add one, I will type this. A 19 in square brackets, because that is saying edit the 19th entry, which doesn't exist, therefore I'm adding it. Likewise, if I wanted to remove one, I would do the same thing, except I would just type the category number that I'm trying to remove and false. In this case, I'm removing the defense category. Even though I'm removing the defense category, this number stays to 19, because this is still inside of that list, it's just set to false now. I wanted to address that, because that will be a different way of editing lists that will be used commonly. Likewise, in this destruction parts of death, I have kept that, because if you'll notice, this is also in a list. The only difference is they are in curly brackets. When your list is in curly brackets, you do the same thing, but you also have to keep the curly brackets. So in this case, I'm editing the third entry. And to show the effects of the unit blueprint merge, I will make the point defense health very high. That way it'll be very obvious that my changes are going through. I will also change the max radius to further exaggerate this point. As I have said, you could just copy in all of the code of an original unit and just paste it in. This will work, it's just that it's frowned upon. You can also have multiple blueprint merges in the same file, and it's recommended to do so because all of your merges will be in one place. The best thing to do would be to just create a line of dashes like this and name it by faction so you can more easily find specific units. To show that this works, I have pasted in all of the information and I will not be changing anything except for something in the weapons. I'm addressing the second weapon in this list. I'm going to be changing its max radius to a much higher number. I'm doing this to show this is the method used to change 
entries in the list. This is how it needs to be done, otherwise you will always be trying to edit the first entry no matter what you do. And that is not what you want. Of course, if you're doing it this way where you're completely overwriting the unit with all the old information, you can just add things on right after like this. And that will work. However, again, this method is frowned upon. You only want to keep what you're going to use. It's just better to use this method, because this keeps your file small, and everything you changed will be right here and is easily readable. Whereas this, if you change things, it'll be hard to find. With that out of the way, I'm going to do an ability blueprint merge. The difference is this. Instead of unit here, we're addressing an ability blueprint. This stays the same, but this is going to be the name of the ability in the ID slot. I'm going to edit the convert energy ability. Abilities can be found in the uncompiled Lua folder under abilities. And here's the convert energy ability that I'll be changing. I'm going to give it a very high amount of mass for a very small amount of energy to make it very obvious that I have made changes. The other type of blueprint merge is the projectile merge. Instead of blueprint ID, we're going to be using source, and the field here will be the directory of wherever your projectile is. Projectiles can also be found under this folder under projectiles. I'm going to be editing the cannon shell 05 because that's what the point defense fires. All of this should be lowercase. The directory should start with a forward slash, and they should all be forward slashes. You have the name of the projectile twice, but the second time, you add underscore proj.bp. I'm going to remove all effects from this projectile, so it's very obvious that I have changed it. This is all the types of blueprint merges. The other type of overriding a unit is shadowing. Shadowing will copy the directory of the unit completely, and will only replace files that exist. This is the only way to overwrite .lua files. They are different in that they cannot be merged. You use shadows to overwrite them. The difference between shadowing and blueprint merges is that shadowing replaces everything. So in this case, you need to have the original unit's entire files with everything inside of them. All of the original code and your changes. So I'm just going to leave this as is. The only thing I'm going to change is inside the script. I'm going to remove the effects so that I also know that the shadowing is working. You can use two dashes to remove a line. So this is commented out. This will not be looked at through the code. You can also add two square brackets and close them in to make it not run a segment of the code. So now none of that will be run. They have to be ended though, so make sure you make them closed out. In the end, they should make a square like that. When we open the game, we will have a log that comes with it. That is what the launch option does. Now I will look for this line of text in the log, and that will tell me that my merges are in fact being loaded, and that my mod is working. So, that should be everything. I have merged a unit, a projectile, and an ability blueprint. I have also merged another unit with copying all of the original code, and I have shadowed a different unit to completely replace it. Now when the game starts, you will see this over here to the side. That is the log. Now when I load into a game, we watch the log file. And right there it is. Those dashes and blueprint merges loaded. That means it has run my file, and the blueprint merges that I have made were successfully applied. And they were after the original units. So now when I build this heavy point defense, you can see it has very, very high health. And once it's finished being built, it'll also have very high range, because I changed that as well. And now you can also see the projectiles have no effects. So now I can confirm that my blueprint merge worked for the point defense, and my projectile blueprint merge worked as well, because there's no effects on these projectiles. There's no poly trail, and there's no effects on it. 
So the other unit that I've changed is the massing strike, and I've changed its range. So it also extends out very far. As you can be seeing, it normally does not have this far range. Alright, so I have discovered something that I didn't know before. So shadowing units does not actually appear to affect that blueprint files. It only appears to be affecting the Lua files. Because I have changed this unit's size and health, but those changes are not going through. However, when I try to build a unit, there are no effects. This effect here, these are blinking lights, those are different. There should be sparks coming out the side, which there are none. That's indicating that my shadow has gone through, and it's removed those effects. However, the blueprint has not changed. So it appears to be overwriting the script files, but not the blueprint files. The other unit I did not show is the mass converter. As we see when I hover over this, it costs 25 energy and gets me a large amount of mass. So it can be seen that that blueprint has been merged. And I already built the point defense, but I'll do it again. Its health has changed, and its projectile... Its projectile has changed. So that's everything. The ability blueprint, the unit blueprint, and the projectile blueprint. And this is shadowing for the Lua files, because that's the only way to overwrite Lua files. I'm still near certain that all files will be completely overwritten, however, so you do still need to copy over everything from the script file. There will be many links in the description. They will lead to many other places that will have a lot of useful knowledge. Most of the stuff from this tutorial is in those archive form links. It's just that they're so hard to get to and find that having a video that compiles all of that information and is current would be very helpful for people who are looking to do this. When I first started out, it took me two weeks just to figure out the basics, whereas this video will have all of that said and done in 20 minutes. If anything was unclear, let me know in the comments. I'll be reading the comments and answering any questions that anyone has. As well, if I missed anything, let me know. I will be doing future videos if I have missed anything. They will be later on in the series, but that'll go over everything that I might have missed. This was just the basics, but there's a lot more to come. So thank you all so much for joining me on this tutorial episode. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned something. I'll hopefully see you in my next one, so if I will, see you there, I'll be waiting.